Mr. Um, last night, Minister Roshan Shortall voted confidence in Dr. James Riley, but it was clear from her speech and her remarks and the tone of her remarks and the fact that she failed to mention the Minister's own name that she doesn't have confidence in the Minister. It was pretty clear that she, not only did she not mention her name, but she outlined in her speech a series of issues that are a concern to her and within her priority were not being progressed within the Department of Health. It's hardly a sign of her faith, not just the Minister Riley, but of the entire government machinery. She outlined her concern, and it's a direct quote, about the lack of priority afforded to producing the free GP care legislation, which is one of your, plan your commitments uh, in the programme for government. She's also concerned about the introduction of universal health insurance. And after 18 months as a government minister, Minister Shortall is still asking very basic questions on what model universal health insurance will be based on in this country. So either from that we can deduce that there's been no work done in the area, or that the Minister has been excluded from any negotiations uh, on the area. And she is the Minister in charge uh, of primary care. What I'd like to ask you this morning, have you ever had any discussions with Minister Shortall about her working relationship with Minister James Riley? Has she ever discussed her concerns that she outlined here last night in her speech with you? Has she ever discussed the concerns in relation to the delays uh, in her being given delegated powers <coughs> with you? Or have you ever taken it on yourself as the leader of your party and as Tanishtha to discuss what is very apparently a broken working relationship in the Department of Health? Thank you. <coughs> Civil War in the Department of Health. Yes, I heard uh, the uh, uh, contribution of Minister Shortall to the debate last night as I heard the contribution of the Minister for Health, Minister Riley, uh, and Minister Kathleen Lynch. And I also heard uh, the collective voice uh, of this House, uh, which voted uh, by a margin of two to one, uh, and every uh, government uh, deputy, commending the Minister for Health for the reforms that have been uh, undertaken to date, more in 18 months than you did in 14 years uh, when you were uh, in uh, in, in charge of the Department of Health uh, and supporting the reform programme uh, that this government has uh, in health. And what we, ha what we have heard from this government and what we have seen from this government over the course of the last uh, 18 months is an urgency and an impatience to reform our health service with less money and less staff uh, than you had available to you. And I expect and the country expects that those reforms will be delivered. And I do so because, while you may, wa you may wish to make a political issue of it this morning, out there, out there somewhere, out there somewhere, out there somewhere there's a mother with a, ch with a child who has a nasty cough and she's wondering whether uh, she can take that child uh, to the doctor. And that's why, that's why for the first time we have a government that is committed to introducing a system, uh, introducing a system of there. universal health insurance with equal access to care for all, and under that system there will be no discrimination between patients on the grounds of income or insurance status, and the two-tier system of only equal access to hospital care will end. That's what we're committed to in our programme for government, and that's what we're going to deliver. And yes, I have discussed the delivery of that several times with Minister Shortall, Minister Health, at the relevant Cabinet subcommittee, uh, and uh, with, uh, with, with my colleagues. And I want to assure you we are determined to deliver on that commitment. And I expect, I expect and I have confidence that the ministerial team in the Department of Health will do that delivery. Thank you, Doris. Without interruption. Once again, Tanishta, you, you failed to completely answer the question. You, you, you have the gall to come in here and speak about, I mean, there's a direct quote, an urgency and an impatience. An urgency and an impatience. And Minister Shortall said last night that she had concern about the lack of priority afforded to producing the free GP care legislation. The Minister in charge of it says that not enough has been done for that mother with her sick child. And you speak about an urgency and an impatience. Yeah. What have you done 
to address the completely fractured working relationship between Minister Shortall and Minister Riley? No, what have you specifically made any intervention on a constructive basis to ensure that she has the support, that she has the delegated powers in order that she can, she can do the job Joe. to help that mother, to help any mother or any patient get the GP care? Because she's in charge of the job but she feels she's not getting the support to do the job. So don't come in here and talk about an urgency and an impatience when the minister in charge of doing the job feels she cannot Question, do the job. Please, thank you. <coughs> Honestly, hey, would you mind asking your assistant here to stay quiet? Right? When it comes to Gaul, Akan Korla, Fianna Foyle has it in abundance. After 14, after 14 years, after doubling the expenditure in health, doubling the numbers of people working in it, you ended up leaving us with a health service that was worse than when you, than when you got it. And we are in the process. This government, this government, this government is in the process of repairing that. We have a strong team in the Department of Health, led by Minister Riley, Minister Shortall and Minister Lynch. And they are getting on with the job of repairing the health service that you broke. And we are, we, they are going to deliver on that. I expect that they will deliver, and I'm confident that they will deliver. Thank you. Deputy MacDonald, please. Thank you. I think Deputy Clary is possibly suggesting relationship counselling, some kind of mediation uh, for the two persons concerned. Uh, yesterday, and I, I wish to reiterate again today, our welcome for the publication of the proposed wording of the constitutional amendment on children, and I wish to congratulate government on that publication. I think it's without doubt a very significant and long overdue step towards enshrining children's rights in the constitution. But Tanishta, as you know, the reality of life for many children across this state is a world away from the aspirations in the proposed constitutional amendment. Over 100,000 children across this state live in poverty. And this number has, of course, increased in recent years because of the policies of Fianna Fáil and, indeed, the policies of your own government. So if we are serious, collectively serious, about making the best interests of the child a paramount consideration in public policy and in the law, then we need a strategy to tackle child poverty. So, Tanishta, I'm asking you for a number of commitments here this morning. I want you to commit that the forthcoming budget will be chi children proofed. I want you to give a commitment to the Dáil that there will be no measure contained in the budget which will place yet more children in poverty. And I ask you also, Tanishta, to go one step forward and to set out for us what your strategy is for dealing with children living in poverty. Thank you, Deputy. Tanishta? Well, first of all, can I thank uh, Deputy MacDonald for her welcome uh, for the publication of the uh, constitutional amendment uh, to enshrine the rights of children uh, for the first time ever uh, in, our, in our constitution. Uh, and uh, I want to, to welcome uh, her support uh, and her party support uh, for uh, the government's uh, effort in that regard. Uh, and uh, I hope that we will collectively uh, succeed uh, in having that uh, referendum passed and having for the first time uh, the rights of children uh, enshrined uh, in our constitution. This government gives a very high priority uh, to children, to the welfare of children, the safety of children uh, and to their rights. That is why for the first time uh, in the history of the state uh, we have a cabinet minister who is specifically responsible for children and youth affairs and a department of children uh, which is responsible for children and youth affairs. And every measure that is taken by government, every proposal, whether it is a budgetary proposal, a financial proposal or a legislative proposal, uh, is examined. Uh, by the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs uh, and by her department before that measure uh, is discussed uh, at, uh, at Cabinet and by, and by Government. 
and the views and the observations uh, of the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs and her department are taken into account always in any decision uh, that we make. And that will, uh, I can assure you, be the case uh, in relation to uh, the um, uh, budget matters and in relation to any other matter uh, that comes before, uh, before government. Um, this government is uh, determined to turn this economy around. We've inherited a situation where our economy uh, was on the floor when this government came to office. Uh, we have a job of work to do in which we're making progress, turning that economy around, creating employment, creating the wealth and the income to lift people out of poverty. Our efforts at economic re uh, recovery are not an object or an end in themselves. Uh, they, they, they have, um, they're a means to achieving a more equal society, a fairer society, and a society in which we have far, few, far poor, fewer poor people. Deputy MacDonald. Tanishta, um, I'm not interested in hearing your uh, lament around Fianna Fáil. I really, I, really wish, I really wish that you would stop it. I, I, I really wish that you would stop it. Because despite the answer that you've given me, you see, your last budget was judged not just by Sinn Féin, but by an organisation such as Barnardo's as having heaped huge hardship precisely on children. So stealth taxes, cuts to public services, cuts in social welfare, all had an impact on child citizens. That's a fact. Question, and of please. course we had the day back around DESH schools and an attempt to take teachers away from some of the most disadvantaged children in the state. So I don't have any sense of confidence, Tanishta, that in fact the process for child-proofing the budget is robust. You see, the, new, the constitutional referendum won't just be about a plebiscite of the people and a, and a popular vote. It puts it up to you as government to put your money where your mouth is. And if you are serious about protecting the rights of children, you will protect the services that they rely on, you will protect Thank the you. income of low and middle income families. That's if you're serious, because Tanish, the fine words and whinging about Fianna Fáil is not going to put bread in the belly of one single child. Thank so you. I ask you again for a concrete commitment that when Ministers Noonan and Howland stand up to make their pronouncements in the forthcoming budget, that no measure, no measure will be contained therein which will put even one additional child into a position of poverty. Give that commitment and please do so without you, uh, referring backwards uh, to the people in Fianna Fáil. Tarnishton, please. Um, well, of course, Sinn Féin never listens to the, the answer and always assumes, all, always, always, assumes, always assumes that we've said things. I never mentioned Fianna Fáil in my answer to you. Uh, there were no... Uh, uh, there were, no, there were no cuts in social welfare rates in last year's budgets. There were no cuts in payments to, to children in last, year's, uh, in last year's budget. And in relation, in relation to addressing, in relation to addressing uh, the issue of child poverty, which is an issue, and an issue that this government is, is very concerned about, as any parent knows, the most, the, the most prudent thing that you can do for children and their future is to ensure that you have good management of your financial affairs now and into the future. And that applies, that applies, that applies, that applies, that applies, whether it is a household or whether it is a government dealing with the national finances. And that is why, that is why, that is why the whole approach that this government is taking to the national finances, to the creation of employment, to economic recovery is precisely to ensure that there is a sound future for our children, that there is adequate provision for children, that the education service is adequate, that child support services are adequate, that income supports are, are adequate, and we're committed to doing that. Thank you. Deputy Boyd Barrett. Uh, thank you, Ken Corley. Um, Tónishta, uh, last year uh, we saw an unprecedented public revolt and mass boycott uh, against the unjust household charge that your government uh, imposed. Uh, faced with that revolt, uh, the minister uh, responsible went into hiding for a period, uh, but 
uh, the government <coughs> finally admitted that the household charge was unfair and unjust and promised that they would come forward with something that was uh, fairer. In the last few weeks, uh, it is becoming clear with various leaks uh, from the government uh, that what is coming forward is not going to be fairer, but as we who opposed the household charge predicted, ordinary families, even if it's at the 0.2.5% uh, lower figure that has been leaked, are going to be paying uh, five or six or seven or 800 euro uh, a year in, uh, in property taxes. Now, can I ask you, Tawnishtown, in a situation where 1.6 million people in this country have less than 100 euro <coughs> a month left after they pay their bills, when 900,000 people are living on or below the poverty line, including 100,000 children, how do you expect people to pay this uh, charge? Don't you realise that if you press ahead with this, you are going to push hundreds of thousands of families into poverty? You cannot get blood out of a stone. And don't you realise that if you press ahead with it, that the revolts that you saw and the protests you saw against the household charge will be nothing compared to the public revolt you are going to see if you impose hundreds of euros more in austerity uh, taxes on ordinary low and middle income families, on the unemployed, on people who are facing uh, mortgage distress. And it really makes a mockery of your claims that you're going to protect children if you're going to Thank impose you. a property tax that will drive the parents of those children into poverty. So will you give us an assurance, uh, Tawnish, that, that you are not going to impose further unsustainable you, financial burdens on ordinary families, on the unemployed, on low and middle income families and on people facing uh, mortgage and financial distress. What we saw last year, Deputy Boyd Barrett, was you running around the country advising householders not to pay the household charge. To date, to date, to date, 1 million and 45,000, 1 million and 45,000 of those uh, householders have ignored your advice uh, and have paid the charge. There are, however, still a large number of people who took your advice and who are now increasingly finding that they have more to pay now than they would have last year if they hadn't listened to you and some of your colleagues in the first place. Now, it was always the case, Deputy Boyd Barrett, it was always the case, Deputy Boyd Barrett, and the government made it very clear at the beginning, that the household charge would be replaced by a property tax. Now, you profess to be a socialist. I have never met, I have met, I have never, I have never met a socialist who, who doesn't feel that a property tax uh, is something uh, that should be proceeded with. So can you tell me, you tell me now, are you in favour or are you not of the introduction of a property tax? And if you are in favour of the introduction of a property tax, can you tell us, can you give us the benefit of some guidance as to what you think would be a fair property tax? Because this is something, this is something that the government is working on. And we would value, we would value your opinion. Let us have your opinion. What type, we, we have already made it clear now that we intend to introduce we introduce a property tax and we would value, instead of you jumping up and down and opposing and organising protests about something that hasn't been introduced at all yet, we would value, we would value, let's be constructive for a change Deputy Boyd Barrett, let's leave down the picket, take up your pen and, and set out for us what, is, what, is, what are your proposals in relation to a property tax? What do you think would be a fair, a fair property tax? Tell us now, or if you're not in a position to tell us now in the House, maybe you let us know in the course of time so that we can have the benefit of your wisdom on this matter. Deputy Boyd Barrett, thank you. De Deputy Boyd Barrett, please, thank you. Uh, First of all, first of all, uh, I don't think I don't think you should insult uh, the people of this country by suggesting by suggesting. Uh, sorry, sorry, that's sorry, that's sorry, 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 sorry. Please, 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 please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, please Ken proceed. Tarnished, uh, I don't think you should insult the people of this country by suggesting that the more than million households that refuse to pay the household charge 
before the deadline that your government set on the 31st of March earlier this year did so simply because we advised them to do it. They did it because they recognised it was an unjust and unfair charge. And because of that boycott and that revolt, your government was finally forced Could to admit that it was unfair and unjust. Could you have a question, what I, please? What I want to know, what I want to know from you, Tornishta, what I want to know, and more importantly, what hundreds of thousands of families across this country want to know is that what you are going to replace the household sorry, charge sorry. with will sorry. not be worse than the hundred euros that you imposed on them last year. Because all the indications are question, that it will please? be three or four or five Thank you. times uh, what you tried to impose on them last year. Thank you. Uh, and what we have proposed... Deputy, I have to remind you once again, you're over time. Would you please put a supplementary question? Thank you. Uh, we want a wealth tax. So why don't you... Why, this is my question, uh, uh, Thank Port. you. At long last, why, doesn't, why doesn't this government put taxes on the people who can afford it, rather than continue to hammer the people who can't, thank who are hang, hanging on by their fingernails, who are being driven into poverty because this of your determination you. to you. and protect the super wealthy? Okay, thanks very much. Oh, but I'm your peak hat and go back to St Michael's. I'm quite certain that the Taunus is able to reply himself. He doesn't need any assistance from any side of the house. Thank, Thank you very much. Would you please Thank proceed, Taunus? Thank you. Uh, We'd like to hear. Corla. Thank you. Thank you, Count First of all, first of all, Deputy Boyd Barrett, a little, a little history and a little accuracy. The commitment to uh, introduce a property tax. Was contained, was contained in the programme for government, uh, was, uh, was also contained uh, in the respective uh, manifestos of the two parties which now uh, form the government. And when the, and when the, when the, when the uh, household charge was introduced, it, we made it clear that it was introduced as an interim measure pending the introduction of a property tax. The details, the details of what, how that property tax will be uh, composed, what it will be based on, is a matter that is currently under consideration by the government. Now again, again Deputy Boyd Barrett, again Deputy Boyd Barrett, I invite you or any other member of the House who has a concern about the property tax issue to let us know a couple of things. First of all, in principle, are you in favour or are you not of introducing a property tax? And secondly, and secondly, 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 can you let us have what are your proposals in relation to a, to, to a property tax? Set it out for us. What it should be based on? Uh, what, it, what level it should be? What level it should be? Uh, uh, what level it should be? Should, should be should be charged at? Uh, you want to tax the super wealthy? Right. Let us have the detailed proposals, and we'll consider those, and we'll look at them. But let us have the proposals. Let us let us let us have the proposals. And as I said, you can do it here in the house, or uh, you can do it uh, by uh, making a submission to us or uh, making your proposals to us in detail. Thank you very much.